Okay, so welcome. Um, so today I would like to um, talk a little bit about um, the limitations of ontologies with respect to modeling uh, reactions. Um, and I'll give you a few examples where, where, where I think um, there are limitations and um, I'm very happy and curious to, to discuss with you a little bit if this is really a limitation and how we can resolve this. So let me just give a few examples. Start with chemistry, of course. Let's start with uh, some complex chemistry. Um, this is an example from um, um, iron sulfide um, hydrogenase, oh, sorry, hydrogenase um, uh, uh, no, uh, activities or mimics. So you have an iron sulfide cluster and a photosensitizer. And what you see here is a reaction scheme. Um, so very com it looks quite complex. So it's a, it's a um, model of this reaction. Um, and the relevant um, part of it is the excitation states of these uh, photosensitizers. And only a few of these excitation states are uh, then, then um, productive and others are not. And also the bond between the iron sulfide cluster and this um, a photosensitizer plays a, a huge role in this overall reaction. Um, if you look at them from, from an ontological perspective, um, you, you can ask competency questions, so questions that um, explore some knowledge um, out of this reaction. And uh, for this uh, reaction, you could, for example, ask um, which of the photosensitizers, so, so which ligands can you use to um, give the best uh, electrons, uh, deliver the best electrons into this iron sulfide cluster, for example, or which atoms are involved in the interaction between the photosensitizer and the cluster. So, so just different aspects of the uh, cluster formation. And this needs to be somehow modeled. Then um, um, another example are Diels Alder reactions. Diels Alder reactions so are sometimes thermally allowed, sometimes photochemically allowed. And, um, and then they have, and they show, as in this example, stereochemical, um, stereochemistry. And it's sometimes, uh, um, so it's, it's very dependent on the situation. So, so it's not something that you can easily predict, uh, at least if you don't do like complex modeling of the, these reactions. And uh, if you think about, uh, for example, a database that, uh, or a graph database, a knowledge graph that represents such reactions, one somehow needs, would need to um, in, add this information under which conditions a reaction is possible. So, so for example, um, which in wavelengths uh, um, enable thermally uh, forbidden deals alder reactions or, um, what are the enzymatic products of these reactions? Or um, how are the products distributed? That's another question. So, so if you look at, uh, de depict a reaction or de a model a reaction in, a, in an ontology, in a graph database, how do, you, how do you reflect all these product distributions in this whole thing? How do you, dist uh, how do you reflect the, um, the stereochemistry in, in this um, uh, knowledge graphs. Then another example is from plasma chemistry. So plasma chemistry, the excitation states of the atoms play a very huge, important, very important role in this whole concept. And um, so, so it's not about only the, the species, so, so the, the um, molecules, but also if they are charged or in a radical state or even um, in a particular excited states, not, not, not for example, all excited states are productive in this plasma chemistry um, reaction. So it's uh, very important for them, for the whole plasma chemistry as a, um, community to also have notions about the electronic uh, the excitation states, though the term symbols of these um, atoms or uh, molecules or, or, or um, atoms. Yeah. Then, um, you could then ask in this competency question, so, so asking the knowledge graphs, so which are then charged, excited uh, states or radical species, and which are involved in a, in a certain reaction? Um, what is, again, the distribution of the products under certain conditions, because you might change the 
the um, plasma intensity, the um, the um, composition of the plasma, or the um, radiation, um, um, and then you get different product distributions. And uh, what are, for example, common species to um, model a certain reaction? Then a, a third um, example I'll um, derive from our um, research here at, in, in my institute, my group. So, so we're doing biocatalysis and uh, doing that with quite complex molecules. So, so this is a transaminase enzyme. If you look at it from a bond perspective, it looks like this. So quite complex chemistry. And we are interested in um, these interactions between a substrate and the protein backbone. So, so how, what are the, the um, distance, bond distance, what are the bond angles, what are the rotational um, um, degrees of freedom in these residuals um, interacting with a certain substrate? What are the electronic states and transition states in, in this uh, enzymatic reaction. So, so all of these things, if we want to do like machine learning and modeling and, and predict a certain outcome of a certain reaction, we need some information about the, all these interactions, all these um, rotom rotomeric states, so the, also the gene dynamics of the whole um, molecule. So it's not only about just the, the 2D structure of it. So it's very, it would be a very oversimplification. So, so if you draw the <clears throat> reaction, um, like an organic chemist might draw it, then, then it looks like this. Um, so, so you have again, like, um, an, so this is transaminase reaction. So, so you have like a transfer of an amino group uh, to, um, uh, or the other way around. Um, so, so you have a racemic, um, a kinetic resolution, and you can drive it in both directions. And this is also not, not shown here in this arrow. So, so you can go from a ketone to an amine, amide, eh, sorry, amine, or the other way around. So you can uh, use this amine here and go to the ketone. So, so um, um, and all the, what you see here in the, in the bottom is that not all enzymes do this transformation. So you need <clears throat> a lot of knowledge about, um, so, so these are, for example, mutations of these enzymes. And some, uh, for example, show high selectivity for the S enantiomer, others show high selectivity for the uh, R um, enantiomer. And all this knowledge, this know-how needs somehow to be captured if you want to do like, um, competency questions of the kind which substrate enantiomer interacts with which of the catalytic um, amino acid residues, which uh, um, is the main product of this biocatalytic reaction under certain conditions. Um, uh, what are the rotomeres, charges, protonation states, tautomeres and metal ions involved in the whole catalytic transformation? So all of this information needs to be answered or needs to be known to answer if a, if a certain biocatalytic reaction is possible or not. So, so if you just write it down as a, a simple reaction, as I showed it here, it's, the information is much too little and it might be, even if you change the buffer here, so, so you see here, it's a 0 0.05 molar chest buffer. Is it, if you change it, for example, to whatever tris buffer, and it very maybe the pH, it wouldn't produce, or it would uh, may have different selectivity. So all of these external factors play, especially in this this type of reactions, a very very important role, and they need to somehow captured in, in a knowledge graph, and of course also some terms captured in ontologies to uh, to describe these reactions. Um, in its full extent, and then also query, for example, knowledge graphs uh, to derive information from that. So, so um, what we, for example, intend to do with this type of reaction is we would like to predict if a certain um, a mutation influences uh, the selectivity, product selectivity in, in one or the other direction. 
And if you want to learn from this, doing machine learning from that, you need to have terms for that, describing these things. So this is um, a requirement. Okay. So um, we were thinking about a lot of concepts and uh, one of course could be to model everything like like Henrik uh, Borgel uh, explained yesterday. So, so that, that you really start modeling the world and then go into very deep modeling. Um, so you could um, build up like an ontology um, terminology uh, box and then build up uh, an, an A box. So, so a huge uh, database of um, individuals and then query the, the knowledge graph. And then an alternative approach to that is or could be, and this is a, um, a work in progress and proposal to all of you now, that we only um, define a very tiny terminology box that, that just explains the terms that um, we are handling with, so, so, so which, which are describing the reaction in a, in a, in a, with a bare minimum. So really applying Occam's razor or, or Occam's razor-like um, um, mindset so to, to minimize the whole description as much as possible to just capture it, to just uh, be able to, to explain. And then um, use external sources um, when they are needed. So, so like um, um, similar to an agentic, so, so if you know the RAC system, so, so the, uh, the, the um, RAC retrieval augmented systems where, where you um, get only the information when, uh, so, sorry, no, not the RAC system, the, uh, the agentic RAC systems where, where you have like um, an agent uh, um, addressing some external resources when they are needed. So not, um, so, so, not building up everything like, for example, uh, we had heard yesterday KB, so the KB approach that they tried to really capture as much as uh, chemical information about the most common chemi chemicals as possible, but rather just defining the, the, the skeleton, the, 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 let's say the vocabulary and its relations, and then use asynchronous, asynchronous queries to um, retrieve data that is not uh, preliminary uh, represented in the knowledge graph. So, so that you have like a distributed graph basically, or distributed, no, sorry, not distributed graph, distributed knowledge. So we have a simple graph, a, a small graph, and then um, a lot of the uh, tabular information like relational information that is Derive, uh, um, accessible through, for example, a PubChem or, or Uniprod or whatever um, databases can be then queried on demand. So, so when you try start to reason and you want to derive some, so for example, the reaction me mechanism of this um, particular tr um, transaminase, you could then um, reason and, and go through this um, graph in your uh, knowledge graph and when you hit a point where no knowledge is stored in this graph you start an agent that um, queries asynchronously um, some uh, database and returns and this then um, uh, um, adds in the moment when when you need the information adds the information to the to the graph and by that you shrink the whole knowledge graph and the whole query stuff to, to an accessible, manageable size, but um, yeah, and, and, and uh, make speed up the whole thing. So that's um, our uh, current um, approach to it or where we try to explore how, how well this works. Um, so this I uh, explained. And another um, rep, uh, interesting representation uh, uh, approach is um, a graph re representation of reactions. So this is, um, um, for example, um, very well um, elaborated by the group of Daniel Mer Merkler and uh, Christoph Flam and, and Jakob Andersen in, uh, at the DTU in, uh, at the SDU in, in uh, Odense. So they um, model reactions with graphs. 
and rough transformations. So they, um, for example, uh, start with a certain graph pattern, and then um, depending on the the reaction, they um, 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 have rules to transform a, a certain graph into a target graph. And these graph transformation rules, they describe then not only in a two-dimensional, but also in a three-dimensional and with stereochemistry um, reactions. And by that, you have like a very compact way of de describing reactions because these graphs and transformation rules are very, very tiny and compact. But um, with these graph transformation rules, you can, for example, then um, uh, specify patterns. You, you remember yesterday that Henrik was trying to derive the the name of a certain reaction. In this case, he, he used the um, Haber Bosch reaction um, based on a, on a pattern from the um, from the uh, graphs in his knowledge graphs, so, so from his um, uh, ontology. Um, an alternative approach could be that you model the reaction in a, just in a graph and have these graph transformation rules and depending on the 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 pattern that is um necessary for a, for example for a transformation to a um Haber bosch um product so so in, in this case ammonia ammonia um you could easily find this um reaction uh, and have like a very compressed compact representation of your whole reactions so that's um another um direction where we are working at so um to, to summarize all of that i think we need to rethink think the complexity of chemical reactions so chemical reac reactions are not only organic reactions but they are a lot more and they have very complex things we some people are required to model and and if we do we want to represent everything in in knowledge graphs that's to my impression, a, a very tough uh, challenge, and rather, but rather going to this challenge, we could um, uh, represent knowledge graphs. Um, only the core of it, similar to what Chris explained yesterday, so, so reducing um, core knowledge, and then extend um information by external resources through for example something like an um a, a process an agent that that uh fetches in the background on demand knowledge but this requires of course the development of tools for this reasoning this type of reasoning uh, which is not existed yet so, so that's still um development part but a uh, uh, development um now under development but i want to just uh, throw it into the discussion want to hear something about your uh, some some um, feedback onto this and um, with that i thank you for your attention and also thank our um, partner stefan and Uwe and this group and it's financed by the dfd what, what, what we're doing here also by nfbi for cut Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. Um, as I uh, said in the 